Hey guys and welcome to the sixth video in this tutorial series and in this one we're going to be doing object pooling which is a performance optimization that avoids instantiating too many objects at once during runtime. Let's get into it. Okay so we're in the editor and again we're going to be doing some more organization. So in here I'm going to be creating a new folder. I'm going to call this one enemies and in here we're going to drag our nanobot and our laser in and I'm going to create another folder. I'm going to call this one nanobot. And this is going to carry both him and his projectile. Now we're going to go over to our scripts. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this one performance for all of our scripts that are just there to um, ease the performance. So in here, I'll create a new script called object cooler. And we'll go ahead and open that up now. All right, so in the object cooler script, we're just going to have a few um, uh, members. So first we're going to write using system.collections.generic and oops I forgot a semicolon and now we're just going to write three variables so first one is going to be private static int default pool size for just the size of a pool whenever we create an object pool. And now we're going to do public static pool will grow equals true. Public static dictionary. This is going to be a string and it's going to be associated with a list of game objects. And it's going to be called object pools equals new dictionary and it'll bring up the auto suggestion. All right. Now we're going to write our first function. This one is going to be called public. Um, well, it's going to be called create object pool. We'll write public static void create object pool. And here we're going to have a string for the prefab path. And we're going to have an int count. And now we have to do game object prefab equals resources dot load a game object and of course of our prefab path and we're going to make a new list of game objects and this is going to uh, hold our pooled objects in a reference so that we can access them whenever and now we're going to iterate through for how many objects we made or we want to make and go ahead and make all the objects and add them to the list. Oops, I plus plus. Oh, that's why, because I forgot to write int i. There we go. Alright, now in here we're gonna write game object instance equals instantiate game object prefab. Prefab we just loaded. We're gonna instantiate that and it'll be good objects.add instance and now we're going to write instance not set active false in here really quick we're going to write instance dot hide flags equals hide flags dot um, hide in hierarchy so that we don't have to see it in the hierarchy when it gets messy but we'll comment that out now just for visualization so here we're going to be writing object Tools dot add with the corresponding information. So prefab path and objects. Now that that's done, we're going to be writing our function to get the next pooled object from our object pool by reference. So we'll write public static game object. So we return a game object get pooled oops, pooled object. We're going to have a string prefab path so that we can associate with the same list that we're going to be adding to the dictionary. So in here we're going to write if the object pools does not contain prefab path, then we're going to create that object pool. Oops. Oh, I was doing that. Anyway, and then we're going to return get pulled object prefab path after we create it. 
So now, that's only going to happen if we if the pool does not already exist. Now, if the pool does exist, um, then we're going to have to return an object from the pool. So here we're going to be getting the pool based on the prefab path by looking through the dictionary, basically using the string as an index. So now, for int i equals zero, i is less than pool dot count. Oops. And now i plus plus. In here, we want to write if pool um, if pool of i. So if that specific pooled object that we're finding is not active, then we're going to oops. And we're going to return that object. And now down here, we're going to write if will grow, meaning if the pool will grow if we don't have sufficient uh, game objects in it, then we're going to write game object prefab with resources dot load game object prefab path. And what we're doing here is we're expanding the pool. So next we're just going to be writing game object shot instance oops, instance equals instantiate prefab oops, as game object. Now pool dot add shot instance. And then we're going to return that shot instance. And we should never really reach this point, but um, if for some reason we never return anywhere else, we're going to be returning null down here, uh, just so that it will actually compile. Now that should be just about it for this script, and we're going to be using this script with the nanobot. So if we go to our Unity now, then over here I'm going to create... Uh, I'm not going to create anything. I'm going to go to the AI script, AI Nanobot, and then here we're going to be looking at how our prefab works. So we're totally going to be removing the laser prefab right here, and instead we're going to be adding a string, a constant string. I apologize for the uh, mumble notification if it's distracting. Anyway, but uh, prefabs enemies slash nanobot slash laser. So we're accessing our laser prefab um, as a string from where we just saved it earlier in the editor. And now we're going to go find where we fire. So in here we're totally going to remove this. And I like to have a separate function for firing. So we're going to make private void fire. And in here we're going to move all of the code really quick. And we're just going to put fire in there. And I like to keep this outside of the fire function just to stay clear because we have time here and we have time here. Anyway, so now what we need to do is tell it to um, get the pooled object rather than instantiate. So what we're going to do here is game object laser equals object pooler. Not create, uh, oops, get pooled object. There we go and laser prefab path. And all of these are not supposed to be tabbed this far out. <laughs> My bad. And now we're going to write laser.transform.position to reposition it since we are not instantiating the same way. We're not instantiating at all actually. But uh, we will be instantiating the very first time this is called though because we have not created the pool anywhere else. Anyway, rotation wrote and laser dot set active false oh oops. true and the semicolon outside okay so now we should be good here and we need to go and we need to tell the laser that it's supposed to disable after a certain amount of time and we also um or we already set it active, so yeah, okay, so we don't need to do anything with that. What we need to do now is go to the editor, and we need to go to our laser script, 
and then here I'm going to create a function to disable it. Avoid disable. Oops, <laughs> making a mess here. All right, and then here we're going to do game object dot set active false, and then up here you're going to be creating public float lifetime. And we're going to set this equal to three f. EDF. And um, now we need to have on enable function, which is automatically called by Unity every time it's enabled. So every time we call set active true, it will call this function. So we're going to invoke disable after a certain amount of time, which is lifetime. So now our lasers will disable after amount of time, and then whenever any disabled laser will be reused to fire whenever we have a nanobot working. So now we should be able to go in here and this should be working out right. So if we just pull one of our nanobots in here then we should see a pool spawn and we do see a pool spawn. However I forgot to put our nanobot in a good position so we can actually see him. He was at 600 or so so we're gonna move him down a bit. And here he's going to spawn a pool. And we can see all these gray, um, all these gray lasers over here are the ones that are not instantiated, and the ones that are well, not um, they're disabled. They are instantiated, but they're disabled. And as this guy's firing, he's activating these new ones, and that's just how that works. Now I'm going to go really quick, and I'm going to make a quick tweak to the laser again, and I'm going to set this to change the points by just negative 10 because it's a little difficult with ending the game and now we're going to add a bunch more nanobots so we're gonna to go to the prefab over here and I'm gonna add a bunch more and we can observe how the pool will grow as these guys need however these guys don't seem to need the pool to grow so we're just gonna go ahead and add some more guys and we can see that more lasers are being added on as these guys are coming. But yeah, um, that's how this works with our object pool. And one good application for this is definitely mobile games. In general, it's, it's good everywhere, but one heavy part with instantiating and deleting objects can be on mobile platforms where the phones aren't as strong, of course, as desktop computers, and it can really uh, slow the game down. But uh, that's the purpose of object pooling, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for the rest of this series. Thanks for watching, guys.